Glory to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. What another beautiful and awesome day today to always be in the presence of the Lord. Another day right now to always give the thanks, to always give the praise. Another day right now to always give the glory, to always magnify and shout at his holy name. Because we serve an awesome God, a mighty God, a powerful God, a big God. We serve an awesome God. He is our healer. He is our deliverer. He is our everything. He is our Prince of Peace. Whenever you need him, he's always there. The only thing that you have to do is call on his name. I say the only thing that you have to do, my brothers and sisters, is to call out his holy name and watch how Jesus will come. Watch how he comes through. Watch how he will be right there for you. All you do is try him out. You don't have to be ashamed, my brothers. You don't have to be ashamed, my sisters. All you have to do is call on the name of Jesus and he'll be right there. That's why I'm always encouraging every last one of my brothers and sisters each and every day. That praise is an everyday thing. It's not an on and off switch thing. It's not a seasonal thing. It is an everyday thing. Because the God we serve, the God we praise, He is still on the throne. He is still performing miracles and wonders each and every day in the mighty name of Jesus. He is still in the healing business. He is still in the blessing business. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. And I ain't talking about just to praise him because he wants something. I ain't talking about praise him because you need it anything. I'm talking about praise him. I'm talking about praise him. I'm talking about praise him because you are in love with Jesus. Because you know him. Because you have a, a bond with him. You have a special relationship with him. You communicate with him. That's what I mean by praise. And if you're in love with Jesus, I mean truly, truly, truly in love with Jesus. It seems to be a problem right now today. My fellow sisters, my fellow brothers, we all got to stop doing what you're doing right now and give him a shout out of praise in the house of the Lord right now. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father God, we just come before you peacefully and humbly right now today in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity. We thank you, Father God, for this chance of a lifetime. We thank you, Heavenly Father God, for this word that we're about to receive. We thank you, Heavenly Father God, for this powerful message, God, that's going to keep us full, going to keep us satisfied today. Heavenly Father God, there's no place that we'd rather be at right now today, Jesus, but right here in your house, in your sanctuary, glorify you, magnify you, and shout out your holy name. Oh, God, we give you all things. We give you all praise. We give you all glory. Oh, Father God, we always put you first place in our life, Father God. Oh, God, we're here today to let you know that we can't do this by ourselves. So, yes, Jesus, we are dependent on you. Yes, Jesus, we are relying on you. Yes, Jesus, we need you more and more, Father God. We need more of you and less of ourselves. Oh, God, we just thank you, Father God, for this day. We thank you, Father God, for this opportunity. Oh, God, we don't know how you're going to do it, Jesus. But, Father God, we're here today to let you know that we ain't trying to figure it out. That, Father God, we're going to step back, Father God. Because, God, we realize our hands been stepping in the, our hands been in the cookie jar. We realize, Father God, we've been trying to be you. And we need to sit back and just do what you what, what you would ask us to do. Just trust you. To have faith in you. To have hope in you. Oh, God, today is the day that the Lord has made. We're so glad to be a part of it. And always. Rejoice in it. Oh, Heavenly Father God, I'm asking you to do a new thing in my sister's life. Heavenly Father God, I'm asking you to do a new thing in my brother's life. Heavenly Father God, I'm asking you to move mountains away from my brothers and my sisters right now. Father God, this is your house. The house that you built on solid ground. The house that you built on solid foundation. The house that cannot be moved, it cannot be shaken, it cannot be bothered by nothing or no one. Father God, I'm asking you to speak to our hearts today. Father God, you're in control, you're in charge. 
Father God, we are depending on you right now. Heavenly Father God, we are relying on you right now. Heavenly Father God, you have an open invitation. You're invited right now today on your prayer, I mean on your YouTube channel right now, on your platform. Heavenly Father God, you have an open invitation. You're invited right now into your sister's home, into your into my my sister's life. Heavenly Father God, you have an open invitation. You're invited to my brother's home, into my brother's life. Holy Spirit, you have an open invitation. You're invited right now today into Jesus' YouTube channel on this platform right now. Holy Spirit, you have an open invitation. You're invited right now into my sister's home, into my sister's life. Holy Spirit, you have an open invitation. My brother's home, into my brother's life. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to allow all Jesus' children that's listening to his son and his, and his messages each and every, every day to catch the Holy Ghost fire right now. Oh God, we lift you up right now. We speak in life over our finances. We speak in life over our health. We speak in life over our dreams. We speak in life over our family. We speak in life over our spouses. We are speaking this thing to resistance, God, because this is the year, Father God, that you're going to open up the door. This is the year, Father God, that rain is going to come. This is the year, Father God, that we're going to receive more than enough. This is the year. This is our winning season. This is the year, Father God, that everything's about to start lining up. This is the year how things are going to start manifesting. This is the year when you're going to show up. This is the year, God, you're going to show out. This is the year. This is the year that we should have received the crown of life. This is the year, Father God, that you're going to be right there the victory line, Father God, and we're going to hold our banners up together. This is the year. And if you know this is the year, give God some thanks and praise and glory in the house of the Lord right now today. And tell yourself, this is the year. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. It's like praise is an everyday thing. Praying is an everyday thing. Repentance it's also an everyday thing. Why? Because we all dropped the ball today. We all fell short of God's grace and mercy today. We all made some mistakes today. That's why we need Him. That's why we depend on Him. That's why we rely on Him. But there's too many of y'all right now today you try to sugarcoat things. You try to hide things up on the rug like He didn't see it, like He didn't hear it, and like He was not aware. He saw what He needed to see from y'all today. He heard what he needed to hear from y'all today. And he was exactly aware what took place and what happened to y'all today. You can't fool Jesus. You can't trick him. He already knows. He knew before you did. So if you can't keep it real, be honest with Jesus, you can't keep it real, be honest with nobody. I'm just going to be honest with you. But I need my keep it real brothers right now. I need my keep it real sisters right now to join me and repent. If that's okay for you. Heavenly Father God, I come before you peacefully and humbly right now in the mighty name of Jesus. And I'm asking your holy person mighty name to please forgive me, all my sisters, all my brothers, for every anything Jesus that we done wrong in the sight of your eyes today. Father God, please forgive me, all my sisters, all my brothers, for every anything Jesus that we had in our heart that was not part of you. Father God, please forgive me all my sisters, all my brothers, for every anything, Jesus, that we had in our mind that was not part of your Father's will. Please forgive us tonight, Jesus. Purify us in your blood right now today, Jesus. Wash us as white as snow right now today, Jesus. Father God, I want to say thank you right now today for forgiveness for our sins. Thank you, Father God, for not remembering our sins anymore. Thank you, Father God, for the clean sleep. Thank you, Father God, for the opportunity. Thank you, Father God, for the chance of a lifetime. Thank you, Father God, for understanding. Thank you, Father God, for coming through. Thank you, Father God, for always being right there. Thank you, Father God, for always listening. Thank you, Father God, for always healing. Thank you, Father God, for always protecting. I just want to say thank you. And Father God, before I get started, it's something that's always in my mind that I gotta let it out and let you know today. It's something that's always in my spirit. It's something that's always in my heart about you, Jesus. It's something that always stands on the fruit of my tongue and always stands on the fruit of my lips. And Father God, I've been trying to keep it to myself. But Father God, 
I don't know how much long I can keep this to myself. I don't know how much long I can keep how I really feel about you, Jesus. But Father God, I got to tell you one thing. I can't thank you enough, Jesus. 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 Jesus, I can't thank you enough. That's why I praise you the way I do, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I glorify you the way I do, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I put my faith, my trust, my hope in your hands every day, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I'm in love with you the way I am, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I pray, that's why I boast about you. That's why I talk about you all day long, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I'm in love with you the way I am, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. 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 I can't thank Thank you enough. I can't thank you enough. Glory, hallelujah. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. And if you're ready for God's word, let the church say amen. But let Jesus know right now, I mean absolutely right now, that you can't thank him, that you can't thank him enough. Amen. Amen. I just want to be honest with all my brothers and my sisters today because it's something that we got to be honest about. And it's something that someone has told you about a certain individual, my sisters and my brothers. This person has told you that this person is no good. This person has told you that you need to watch out. This person has given you signs, has given you warning. But we overlook it. Because we can't see it for ourselves. Because the fish scales that's on our eyes is not allowing us to see the truth. Even though we, even though we know it's there. But we really don't want to we really don't want to believe it. We see it. But it's that darkness that's inside of that individual. It's making it sound so good. It's making it sound so sweet. It's making it sound so believable. Because they're in the dark. And that darkness is overpowering us. Somehow, somewhere, we all have been there before. It could be your parents told you about a certain individual. To let you know that certain, that certain person no good. That you need to watch your back. And the whole time our parents were telling us we didn't want to see it, we didn't want to hear it. Because why? Because what they were telling us, what they were showing us, we didn't want to see it. We didn't want to believe it. Even though we knew it was there, but they were so easy to persuade us to make us think that so-and-so was crazy. That so-and-so know what they're talking about. That so-and-so is playing hating on them. That's what they thought. That's what they was giving out on us. And that's what we were seeing. We were seeing what they was telling us to see. But it was the other people who saw what we couldn't see in them. But at some point in our life that we had to see it for ourselves for all of us to believe it. Now I know it might sound crazy because when we saw it the first thing we can go back to is what the what the individual told us about this individual the whole time. But we had to see it with our own two eyes. Because they darkness. But they was in. Was telling us one thing. And that's what we was going on. What they was telling us. That's what they was operating on. Is what they was operating on. And they knew that we was not actually going to believe it until we actually saw it. And right now, the moment that you saw it, now they are mad at you. They are pissed off at you because your light overpowered the darkness. The word of God said, what goes in the dark, it shall come to the light. See, they can't pull that darkness 
over you no more because the fish scales, hallelujah, are gone from your eyes. Now you see the individual for who she is. Now you see the individual for who he is, but you knew it all the time, but you had to see it for yourself. You had to show that light had to overpower that darkness. And once the light overpowered the darkness, because the darkness has nothing to do with the light at all. Darkness has nothing to do with light at all. But your light has overpowered and has overcome that darkness. And the moment they can't fool you no more, the moment they can't play you no more, the moment they can't lie to you no more, the moment they can't deceive you no more, the moment they can't cheat on you no more, the moment they can't play you no more, now they mad because your light has overpowered their darkness. Now you see who she really is the whole time. Now you see who he really is the whole time. You already knew, but you actually had to see with your own two eyes, even though certain people was telling you about him, even though certain people was telling you about her, but you had to see it for yourself. You had to witness for yourself. I don't know who I'm talking to right now. I don't know who I'm preaching to right now, but somebody had to see it for themselves. And the moment you saw it, now that individual is pissed off at you and mad at you because now they can't pull the wool up your head no more because your light my sisters, your light, my brothers, has overpowered and has overtaken their darkness. Come on, somebody. Everything they did in the dark, it can't spread to the light. It can't spread to the light. It was right there. And we all have been there. I've been there before. Somebody told me about the individual. I didn't want to believe it. Because they were so persuasive with themselves, so slick with themselves. But once the fish scales removed from my eyes and the light came on, I knew who they were. And yes, they got pissed off at me. Yes, they got mad at me. But they can't lie to me no more because my light has overtaken their darkness. And what came with what they was doing in the dark. They actually came to the light all along. So now I know who you are, but who you are now. So you can't lie to me no more. You can't sugarcoat it no more. You can't try to sweep up on the road no more. And you expect me to believe that when I actually see the truth right there in front of my face. But I had to see it for myself. Even though you were lying to me. Even though you was deceiving me. Even though you was bashed at me. But I had to see it for myself. In the moment I saw Jesus. They're going to light right there. In the moment that Jesus brought you right into that light. My sisters. The moment when Jesus brought you right into that light. My brother. He said you ain't got a question no more. Because there it is. I brought it right here to the forefront. So you can see it. I brought it to the light. So you can see it. So you're going to question Jesus. After he don't show you what you need to see. Now I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to be, be real about you. A lot of us right now that we still question Jesus. As Jesus brought the situation to the light. When he revealed it to you. He showed it to you. You ain't got no need to question Jesus no more. You ain't got to ask him no more. Because he brought it to the light. He said there it is right there. They go to proof right there. They go to the evidence right there. But see they was hiding their proof. They was hiding their evidence in the dark. Because they knew that you didn't want to believe it. They knew they had you wrapped around their pinky finger. They knew they felt they knew that you had a soft spot for them. They knew that you had a thing for them. Come on, somebody. Just be honest with yourself. Be real with yourself. I've been there before. But when I saw it with my own two eyes, when Jesus was building to me and he brought it to the light, I ain't had a question no more. I ain't had to go back and forth with you no more. Now I know why you're mad at me now. Because everything that you was doing in the dark, all your all your sneakiness, everything that you was hiding from me, he brought it right into the forefront. He brought it to the light for me to see it and for me to uh, be aware of it. And the moment I saw it and the moment that I was aware of it, I didn't have to question Jesus. I didn't have to question him at all. 
Because darkness is afraid of light. See, darkness will never tell a person from the light the truth in the first place. Because they don't want to be exposed. But Jesus said, you ain't got to worry about that. He always going to expose dark people. He always going to expose the people who is not right in your life. And somebody that you know, somebody that you encounter with, someone who you thought was a friend, someone who you thought was your lover, someone who you thought was your mate, has been exposed. And Jesus brought it right to the light and said, nigga, you go, there you go right there. I don't know who he's talking to right now, but he has showed somebody today the truth because he said, I'm tired of my son and my daughter continuing to go through. They're going through. I got to bring this situation to the light. I got to bring this individual to the light. I got to allow my son and my daughter to see who they're dealing with. In the moment that Jesus brought it to the light, he said, this is what they are. This is what they're dealing with. Now, I'm giving you a choice and free will. Either you're going to pretend like you don't see it or you're going to continue to live that lie but they're lying to you about. But you can't fault Jesus about it. Because he brought it to the forefront. He brought it to the table. He showed you who they really was the whole time. Now, what are you going to do about it, my sisters? What are you going to do about it, my brothers? Yes, they pissed off. Yes, they mad. Amen? Amen. Let's go to Genesis chapter 1. And we're going to read verses 1 through, through 5. Genesis chapter 1, and we're going to read verses 1 through 5. And if you have your Bibles open, let the church say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, let there be light. That was a key word. God said, let there be light on the individual that's lying to his sons and his daughters. He said, let there be light on the person who is stealing from their sons and their daughters. He said, let there be light on the one who is cheating on their sons and their daughters. Let there be light the ones who try to manipulate their sons and their daughters. Let there be light who is one who caused a lot of havoc among their sons and their daughters. He said, let there be light. And there was light. God saw that light was good and he separated light from darkness. God called light day and darkness and darkness he called night. And there was evening and there was morning in the first day. But God said, let there be light. He is telling somebody to stay. He said, I don't show some of my sons and my daughters the light. Even though they was in darkness. Even though they've been played and bamboozled by a dark person. But he is telling me to tell somebody today that someone else is still living in that same situation. And he said, I'm going to bring it to the light. He said, when I bring it to the light, you know who you're talking to. When he bring it to the light, there's no need to question him. There's no need to sit there and say, oh, no, I don't think this is true, Jesus. He's not a man that he should not lie. If he see it, he already saw it before you have. If he heard it, that means he was already aware of the situation and the problem before you were. So you ain't got to question it. Because I tell you, my brother, I tell you, my sisters, I was, I was so gone at some point in time in my life. I just needed the truth. No matter how I was looking for the truth, no matter how I was searching for the truth, no matter how I was seeking the truth, this other individual kept lying. And they kept lying and lying and lying and lying and sugarcoating and sugarcoating and sugarcoating. And so after a while, you start believing them lies. You start believing what they're saying. Not knowing they got some darkness that's in them. See, darkness don't have, darkness don't want to be a part of light. See, but light can overpower darkness. Light can drive darkness crazy. So when God brought the situation to my attention and he brought it to the light, the moment I saw it, I said, thank you, Jesus. That's all I need to know. That's all I need to see. I never questioned Jesus when he brought something to the light to me. I never questioned Jesus when he brought something to the forefront to me. 
I never questioned Jesus as he put something right there on the front, on the front of my table for me. I never questioned him because, because Jesus is light and whatever the situation was that was in the dark, Jesus, I got tired of my son and my daughters. I got tired of serving LT always asking me the same questions. So he said, you know what? I got to bring this situation to the light. I got to put a stop to it. I got to put an end to it. Now, but it's up to my sons. It's up to my daughters. How bad do they really want this situation to stop? And God knows that you want this situation to stop. So when he wanted, when he wanted you to realize and recognize the situation, the situation stopped, but he brought the problem and the circumstances to the light. And the moment you saw it, what you going to do? Are you going to question Jesus? Or are you going to say, Jesus, I know this truth. Because it's been true the whole time. I know I've been there. Because he showed it to me. First, and the individuals told me, oh, we can talk about it. We got nothing to talk about because God has made no mistakes. Period. When he brought it to the forefront, when he brought it to the light, I'm going to believe him. And that's what I did. And if you know that God brought something to the light for you recently, or you, or you know for a fact that God is going to bring something to the light to you, go ahead right now and give him thanks. Go ahead right now and give him the praise. Go ahead right now and give him the glory because he's going to bring everything that's being hid in the darkness. He's going to bring it to the light for you to see it, my brothers. He's going to bring it right to the light, my sisters, for you to see it. Amen? Amen. Can you please pray with me? Lord Jesus, I ask of you to come into our life, to God as the rector of Jesus. I believe right now today in the mighty name of Jesus, but I was praying a simple little prayer that God is already working everything out in our life right now today. And if you ever want to get in contact with me, leave me a comment. My YouTube channel is with us by LT. Always keep Jesus first, please. Always seek him. Always honor him. Always praise him. Always put your faith and your trust and hope in Jesus. Always keep your eyes focused on Jesus because he is the author and the perfecter of your faith. Continue to pick up your cross if you follow Jesus. Choose faith over fear. Always continue to pray for your fellow brothers and sisters. It doesn't matter if you know them. It doesn't matter if you ever see their face. Prayer help and prayer changes things. I'm always going to continue to keep on in prayer, my brothers and sisters. The only thing that I ask y'all guys to do for me is continue to keep me in prayer and keep me lifted up to you. I'm serving Minister LT. I love y'all. Stay blessed. In Jesus' name, amen.